<laughs> I'm gonna make it happen. Start whenever you like. We're live. So, Dr. Sanders, as you know, it's been um, um, already kind of a very full morning. Um, so we'll keep this very short sure. in respect of your time. Sure. Um, I'm Vanessa. Um, this is Morgan. And How we, are you doing, my dear sister? Um, Morgan, this is Vanessa. How are you? Yeah. And I, I didn't know about your organization. And, and they gave me, I guess, a crib sheet, you know, yeah. yesterday. Yeah. And I was just so impressed. Ooh, thank uh, you. I was so impressed with, you know, the ideas of what you're doing with our young people. You know, we just came from a ceremony, you know, downtown at Congress <coughs> Square. And one of the things that we kept repeating is that we've got to make sure our children are protected and taken care of right. and loved. And this organization seems to be predicated on a lot of respect and love and leadership also, too and just saying simply that we're not just going to let you wander out in the world by yourself right. because some of us were just left alone to wander That's as right. children but you're there to give them protection and guidance and we thank you for that my thank dear you. sister thank, thank you, you thank my sister. sister so there's so many women who are out there watching today and i want to make sure that they too understand and can follow our conversation what we do mm -hmm. uh, and so my name is morgan and uh, Vanessa, and if you don't know Dr. Sonia Sanchez, please, please, please know her. Um, and, and Say to, to them, her. Google. Yes, <laughs> Google. That's what they do all the yes. time. Google. Google, go get some books, do something, because she's such a national treasure and a personal inspiration uh, to me and to Vanessa, and we'll talk a, a little bit about that. Uh, we are here today because we represent an organization called Girl Trek. Girl Trek started with two friends um, resisting, like Dr. Sanchez said. Uh, anything that was uh, stopping us from living, living our healthiest, most fulfilled lives. And we did that by friendship. And then we did that by moving our bodies and, and staying uh, very fresh every single day. And so what we did is we started walking and we asked as many of our friends and family, can you just walk every single day? Can you commit 30 minutes a day to self-care and self-love and walk every day? And 500 of our friends that first year did it, but we were still working our jobs. We thought this was a good hobby. The next year, there was a call, when are we gonna do the walk again? Uh, and so we were like, I guess we're on to something. So fast forward three and a half years later, we're 65,000 black women mm. across the country who walk to heal themselves, to reclaim the streets of their neighborhoods, to inspire our daughters, and to, to reshape black culture so that we are one of health and healing. And our goal is by 2018 to have 1 million women counted in our ranks. So please, please go to girltrek.org, take the pledge. All you need is a commitment to walk every single day out of your front door for 30 minutes. We wear bright blue shirts. Today we're wearing all white in honor of our ancestors. We're doing a myopa walk in, in, uh, here in New Orleans with Dr. Sanchez. But typically we wear bright, bright blue shirts. You've probably seen us in your neighborhood. Hopefully you will be one of us in our neighborhoods as we reclaim it together. So that's Girl Trek. Please learn about it. And we are so honored to talk to Dr. Sanchez. Uh, I feel like I've talked a lot, so I'm going to let Vanessa frame this for us. So you have a blue shirt for me, right? I do. Thanks for love. I'm sleeping. You know, this is a quick story. I met you before. You're and at, familiar. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at Howard, and you said, can you oh. give me a, a, a Howard sweatshirt extra large? And I was thinking, oh, no. me no extra <laughs> large. <laughs> so funny. But, okay, yes. sorry. Because I yeah. like him to sleep in. You yeah. know, you know? <laughs> and yeah. as I sleep in, I say, yeah, Howard. You know? Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. 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 So we're going to keep this kind of light and fun. Mm -hmm. I, one of the things that we do with black women is we're trying to teach them and share with them the practical ways in which we can both live our healthiest, most fulfilled life, heal from our past traumas, and move mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. We find a lot that we don't always have the know-how. So mm -hmm. we have people telling us to do it, but what does that look like? What does mm -hmm. that feel like on an everyday basis? Um, one thing that you should know is, and a lot of the women tuning in know, is that um, one of the hows for us is through, by listening to other people's powerful, inspiring mm -hmm. words. And we actually, as a mantra at Girl Trek, um, have for the past several years, use your poem, Catch the Fire. Oh, right. um, <laughs> and we have women across the country who have caught the fire. Uh -huh. And we did a beautiful montage, which is online, of women saying it, and live, 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 live. Where is your fire? The fire of sit-ins mm -hmm. and marches. And so um, we want to thank you for that. And my actually first question to you is this. Um, when you, I have two questions for you. The first is, when you are, um, your words inspire us so much. Mm -hmm. Whose words inspire you? That's my first question. Mm -hmm. And then my second question is, one thing I know is that sometimes you have to speak life over your own self. Sometimes it's not going to be somebody else's words. And so I'm curious, 
Whose words inspire you, but then what is your favorite kind of line of your own poetry that you speak over your own self when you're looking for inspiration? Mm -hmm. You know, the great thing about uh, having been a professor all these years is that uh, we discovered people who were hidden, you know, in books, you know. And so, you know, you would come across people and I would say, who's this? Who's this writer? You know, who are these Holland Renaissance women writers? We had never heard of them, you know, mm -hmm. before. And then we went into the libraries and we found them and then we incorporated them into our classes. My dear sister, the, the joy about being a, a writer is that you go and research those people who have written before, you know, who have said things before. Because, you know, I said today at Martha, you know, in Congo Square, that we thought that we were the first ones who had ever discovered anything of being bad, you know what I mean? Like, then we got on stage, we knew we were bad. Young people said, yeah, they, they is bad, they is really bad. And then all of a sudden, I went and heard Sister Gwendolyn Brooks, oh. Sister Margaret Walker, I heard Queen Mother Moore talk about reparations, right? Reparations. And I said, whoa, you know, uh, evidently there's some bad sisters, you know, on this earth that we've never been in, you know, period. But that's the joy. And one of the things I learned from them, simply, is that you must always teach. Every place you go, you must teach. Every place you go, you must do it in a gentle fashion. And you must also recognize when people aren't ready. Mm -hmm. um, and you mustn't scold them, you mustn't get angry, you mustn't curse them out. You just back away for a while. You know, because I studied with Master Moses, you know, a martial arts trainer. And I was a hard person to, to train because, you know, our early poetry was tough. You know, I came out of New York City. You said something, you know, people said something, you know, out loud, America says, the next day I had a poem, you know, that I was reciting someplace and people were chanting and cheering. But one of the things I learned, though, is that you got to have patience, you know, and you got to understand at some point that you always respond, you know, in a harsh fashion. So therefore, I've been teaching young people that when someone says something to them, instead of going, you know, uh, get ready to hit them, you know, and, and smoking with their words, I said, you have to back up and say, excuse me, my dear brother, can you tell me how I offended you in any way so I can change that? Mm -hmm. And this young brother said, you know, you want me to be a punk? Mm -hmm. You know, if I do that, Sister mm -hmm. Sonia, I said, no. And I had great difficulty then at some point because I truly understood what they were saying, mm -hmm. that they did not want to be perceived perceived as someone who was not really, you know, doing something or defending themselves at some point. But, you know, I said, I began to, at some point, I was in Detroit doing a very difficult session with a school, uh, and a young brother came in, and he had been in the principal's office, so he was mad. So he came in to disrupt what we were doing in the auditorium. So underneath his breast, he began to chant uh, a curse word, F, the F word, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody began to hear, so they, they began to, you know, kind of snicker, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm on stage, right? I'm thinking, I heard it. What do you do? You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So then I said, did I hear someone say the F word, you know? And mm -hmm. I said the word out loud. Mm -hmm. and everybody and their mama turned around and looked at me mm -hmm. at that point. <laughs> and I said, who was it? And the brother stood up like, it was me. Mm -hmm. I said it, whatever. So I said, oh, my dear brother, thank you so much for saying it. Yeah. Did you say F? Or did you say F, 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 Did you say F, 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 Well, by the time I, com I dealt with that word, it had no more meaning. Mm -hmm. It had no more power. Yeah. And so, but then you cannot embarrass that young brother. Yeah. So I said, well, come, would you come up on stage and stand with me? Because you helped me teach again. You helped me not just get, come here and give a speech, but you put me back in the classroom. That brother came up, I put my arm around him. I said, everybody, give him a clap, because yeah. he helped me, you know, to teach you something new, whatever. And he hung with me the whole day. <laughs> he had lunch with me, whatever. But the point is that that's what I'm talking about at some point. And so one of the things I had to learn is that I had to learn and read people and know what they had done before me. To know that we are a continuation of those people yeah. who've come before us. That there's nothing new on the planet Earth, but it's just how we interpret it, you know, or what I call 
us as African Americans. You know, someone did a book about uh, Brother Malcolm, and they said he reinvented himself. And I said, uh, I'm confused by that word because when you reinvent yourself, it means there's something about yourself you don't like. Yes. But I think we, what you all have been doing, is that you reimagine. You saying to these young people and older people, we must reimagine ourselves yes. on this American landscape. Yes, that's we right. got to ima reimagine ourselves as healthier. You know. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is body and mind. Yes. And so one of the things that I that I teach, you know, and I'd like to be to join you officially, but I'd like to teach everyone too how to write haku. Yes. Because haku is um, very much um, something that you can chat in the morning. When you get up in the morning, you write a haku that is so peaceful, it makes you begin your peaceful day. It is a mantra, you mm -hmm. know, for us all, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to chat and to be about. So yes, yes I like to consider myself a member, you know, <laughs> yes. um, and I we walk every day. I yes. walk every day oh, anyway, good. okay, good. on the field. I do good. three miles on the field, oh, okay, good. so hey, I'll be up, out there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned um, uh, Brother Malcolm X, who um, mm -hmm. I know you were dear friends with, and, um, and I remember uh, as a young girl reading his book, and I was reading it in bewilderment because he had so many experiences where he met uh, at the time, people who at the time were celebrities right. when he was a child. And right. it seemed for me unrealistic. I'm mm -hmm. going to say that. I was like, how could that happen? I had never been to Harlem. I didn't know that's how it Harlem. worked in Harlem. That's right. <laughs> and so, but fast forward, um, I have, um, I believe that he had a calling on his life. And I believe okay. from the very beginning things were working, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like in many ways I have had great fortune to have those kinds of experiences mm -hmm. in my right. life. Things where at one point, I was working at the, the Panthers headquarters uh, as an intern when I was at USC, and uh, one of the, this, this brother, Michael Zenzen, rest in peace, who, was a, who used to be a right. Panther, and he said, um, he said, sister, I'm going to give you this bullhorn, but you know Angela Davis had this bullhorn. Don't lose this bullhorn, right? <laughs> so I took the bullhorn. I was working with Vanessa in investment banking, and I was going at my break to go protest something. Uh -huh. And um, I got on the elevator, and Ronald Reagan gets on the elevator with me. And I'm saying, well, here I am in my dashiki with Angela Davis's bullhorn and Ronald Reagan's bullhorn. And so I started to become a believer. But the other time I really became a believer, and you're involved in this story, mm -hmm. is I was at Howard University. And somebody asked me if I did poetry, and I lied and said yes. Said yes. Mm -hmm. And so I went home and literally wrote a poem. Oh, right? wonderful. And they said, because Sonia Sanchez is going to be here tomorrow, we need someone to perform. And I was like, oh, crap. So I get up. <laughs> so they sat me next to you because I lied and said mm -hmm. I was a poet. And they sat me next to you, and you couldn't have been, you were so gracious and wonderful. And there was all these real poets in the audience, and, and I just spoke up the loudest. And so I came up to the stage. I delivered my poem about the prison industrial complex. Mm -hmm. And you gave me a standing ovation Aww. by yourself. Mm -hmm. And then everybody joined, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was such a moment. And then I asked you to re-catch the fire. You came up and you looked me in the eye mm -hmm. and told me to catch the fire. And I kid you not, mm -hmm. it was those moments mm -hmm. that gave me confidence to mm -hmm. be able to lead this movement that we're leading yes. right now. And yes. so I thank you for that. And we thank you. I thank we you for thank that. You. And so you said something today mm -hmm. that um, just maybe that story can lead us into. You said um, you you can you tell me what the chant is that you said that it, where it's going to get better? Ibe yi yi, Ibe yi yi. It's twi. Uh huh. You know the language is twi, and um, um, you know sometimes uh, you're in. You know one of the things I do when I go in the schools. You know and um, and some some of the students think that they're tough because they curse. They curse our teachers, you yeah. know, or they say, I'm going to whatever. And so I was in the class and I said, you know, and you have to get with them on that level. I said, you ain't, you ain't bad because you're going to hit a teacher. Yeah. I said, you know, it doesn't take any intelligence to hit somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just a reaction, a reflex, whatever. I said, the intelligence is that when you don't hit somebody mm -hmm. and you look at that person and say, you know, okay, if I'm going to get you, I'm going to get you through an intelligent, you know, uh, response, whatever. Right. And that is certain by, I said, you organize a classroom. Yeah. You organize mm -hmm. a classroom. Because if you're the leader, everybody else knows you're, all, you're the leader already, but you can't lead them down a path of destruction. And so I said, you know, and I was saying the most um, seditious words, and I explained seditious, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. and I wrote it on the board, you know, and made him pronounce it right, and said, you need to say it, and so you should tell people I'm seditious, you know yes. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and have them think, well, what does that mean, whatever, et cetera. But the point is, but you give them new words also, and tend to look it up too. But the point is that you're seditious when you back up 
and you organize. Yes. That's being seditious, yeah. whatever, because that means you're going to take over that class. And so yes. at some point, the teacher will realize that you're running the class. Yeah. But that's what you do. That's much more important than yeah. you teaching people to talk out loud, scream out loud, disrupt mm -hmm. the class. I said, and then also you're being seditious when you make that teacher teach you. You know, when you, you go and find out that you really didn't understand, you come in and raise your hand and say, I didn't understand that, you teach me. And she said, but it's in the book, it's in the book. Yeah, it should be in your head if you're a teacher, otherwise right. we need a new teacher in here. Right. But you do it in such a way that she understands or he understands finally that you really are running that class, that they're just there alone for the semester, you know. But you're coming in there to learn. That's right, yeah. To learn. And I said, the most seditious thing you can do is to learn, yeah. to continue this great tradition mm -hmm. of intellect that right. we have, you know, this great tradition of resistance. I said, we didn't you didn't get here, you didn't get born just because you know you, your mom decided to give birth to you. You got born because you're part of a long tradition you know, of people who have survived this place called America and have survived other places also too. And that's important. And that's what I find so interesting what you're doing at some point, that at some point we get people out you know, uh, but we must get them out when they're walking to t make them stop. When I go out, I, t I say good morning to the trees. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, too, and I'm sure you yes. all do that too. Yes. You mm -hmm. know, and 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 the pine tree is a very healthy tree. Mm -hmm. And I have pine trees in front of my house. And when we finish walking on our field, we go and and hug the pine tree. And for a long time, a little sister used to see us um, walking, and she said, "Why do you go?" And I said, "Because it's a medicinal." You know, mm -hmm. and you talk to that pine tree to you know, to transfer some of that energy. You know, mm -hmm. so you see people coming on the field, coming up, hugging that pine tree, yes. which I think I wish I had a camera sometimes. <laughs> yes. You know, you know, uh, to take pictures. But that's what you know we we should do. So I, you know, I will give you my telephone number. Okay. I will give you my address. You know, anytime you need me to come and talk or say something, whatever, yes. I'll do it. And also, you must know that every place I go, I write about my experience. Uh, that's how I pull poems from it. And so I will write about this experience. And last night was the first night I didn't write about what I've been doing here in New Orleans. I mean, <laughs> I came and hit the bed. But the point is that I will write about this experience here in New Orleans. And, and I will also hold you too close to my heart. Please do. You know, yeah, we'll because, hold you close because to you. you are doing important work. Um, we have a country that doesn't that is killing us via food mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you know and drink yes. whatever and and doing it via the television with these blaring commercials and what we have got to do is to bring people back to what, how simple it is to eat and to stay healthy also mm. in this country. Can I tell you, we're taking a group of women to the eastern shore of Maryland because Harriet mm. Tubman is such amused yes. to what we do, as yes. you can imagine. Oh, yes. And um, part of that is unplugging. We've been taking, we took women to the Rocky Mountains. We've taken mm. them to every single national park in the country. Right. We're, we've partnered with the National Park Service for that reason. It is so, I mean, it is so toxic to just be spoken, I mean, to have all of these messages mm. of, of fast food and all these things at you. And so it's just amazing. We took a group of, of women from a church in Sacramento to um, Yosemite. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we came into Yosemite Valley, mm -hmm. women were going, look at God. And just tears started yeah. and released just by That's just right. even That's seeing it, not even touching right. it, not even hugging it yet. Right. Um, and so the last question I'll, I'll do, and then maybe Vanessa. Um, Can I just say something? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes ma'am. That's like, oh, I'm so happy that I am part, you know, of an organization that has these historic sites, right? Yeah. But I was saying there are also sites that are not historic. Mm -hmm. There are sites that have been massacres on. Yeah. And I was at a place called Smith College, and I was reading my middle passage poem. And in the middle, right about halfway through it, I started to break down. I, I, I mean, I could feel it coming on. I kept saying, what is wrong? And then by the time I finished, there were sobs, tears coming from my feet my knees, my belly, my heart, my eyes, my hands, my head. And then when I finally finished and people stood up and applauded, and then I said, can you tell me what happened on the site? 
and there was a silence. No one said it. I said, no, something happened on the site because there's something that came out of me in that fashion. And, and the archivist was in the auditorium. She said, said, Professor Sanchez, there was a massacre on the site of Native Americans killed. And so one of the things that I want to initiate also too would be, you know, with some of the poetry that I write about many of the sites okay uh, the places that I go to the houses that I go to would be a site where Native Americans were assassinated where Africans were assassinated also too because that's part of our history and history and people have got to know that existed also too yes. you know yes yes, mm -hmm. yes. So let's do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Yes, yes. My last question, Vanessa, uh -huh. I apologize, is you said we have to get better. Vanessa and I are organizers, and we are with hundreds of black women who are or organizing our streets and doing just what you're right. saying. We're reclaiming right. uh, like right. spaces for ourselves right. and renaming them. Um, as organizers, and as we study organizers who came before us, you, your, uh, your contemporaries, and then even going back a generation with Fannie Lou Hamer oh, and all yes. these women, one of the things that a trapping that I that I see is I, I find it hard to give all to my community, organize, and take good care of myself. Mm -hmm. And I see, like Fannie Lou Hamer died too too early. Yeah. And how do we, if we're going to get better, and we have you here to learn from you as the next generation of organizers, how do we get better as or as women organizers? Well, you know, by doing what you did. You know, when we when we looked up and realized that the work we were doing, and coming in whipped tired, at some point we said we got to eat better. We cannot be grabbing a hamburger, you know, at night. You know, this evidence is not going to really make us, you know, get better. And at that point, we, we started to study, I started to study food and alternative medicine, you know. When I was teaching at Amherst College, I had all these pre-med students, so I did uh, an independent study about alternative medicine. Well, they came in and said, oh, good, we'll get an easy A from Professor Sanchez. She's so hard in the lit classes, you know, whatever, but this would be easy. I I work with my eyes, you know, left and right. And then they, but, but they disagreed yeah. because they were like the brightest students at mm -hmm. Amherst College. They said, well, that's interesting. We'll write it down. I met them as doctors in Maryland, a couple of them, and they said, oh, my God. You know, when we were, I was in a meeting, and people started talking about alternative medicine. So I went home and found my notes. Yes. And there they were. That's what we did yes. at some point. We began to talk about alternative ways yeah. of healing yeah. ourselves, okay. you know, and also eating. I became a vegetarian, okay. right, you know, and then I became years later a microbiotic. You, pork chops along you know, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. You heard it. Because, because it will kill okay. you. Okay. You know? I, I hear you. And uh, it yes. will kill you and I kill you it. and kill you, okay. whatever. And if you must eat, you know, then make sure it's organic chicken, okay. you know, you okay. know, even in close organic pork, yes. whatever that is. But if you're going to eat it, eat it once a month. Yeah. And, and grow your own food. And, you and grow your yes. own food, because okay. we had gardens. Yes. We, had, yeah. we had gardens every place I lived, you know, we had a garden in the back. You know, okay. Yes. Okay. And that is important. It okay. is. It is. I want to leave mm -hmm. um, here on this last sentiment and ask you to share a little, something with um, our audience that you shared this morning because it's actually stuck mm -hmm. with me okay. all the morning since you said it. Mm -hmm. We always say at Girl Trek that we are building a movement that is fueled by the love of black women for other black women. Mm -hmm. And this morning you challenged every woman who was listening to turn off the television Mm -hmm. to turn off the toxic messages mm -hmm. that black women have started to embrace, the mm -hmm. negative things that we have started mm -hmm. to believe about each other, repeat about each other, and, and it has become our identity. And That's you right. said, we walk around and we say in the be this and the be this, and you said, what is the B word, black mm -hmm. woman? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you are looking right now at our faces and listening to our voices, Think of all of the black women in your life, in mm. your community, who mm. surround you. Think of the ways in which we have been conditioned to believe that our sisters are our enemies and not our keeper. Right. And so I know that we believe that if the black women who have tuned in today could believe that their love for each other, it is actually, it is the fire, it is the it fuel is. that will it heal is. our communities. And so I actually just wanted to end there by thanking you for mm -hmm. bringing that back because the B word is black woman. And that is the word that we have to hold reverence for and sacred, mm -hmm. and we have to treat each other that way. And, so, and I wanted and to just... all black women, you know, if they're gays, lesbians, yes. transgender, you, you cannot go around and say, well, I want to be in this organization, but I don't really want to hold her hand. You know, yes. you're yes. in the class, yes. you know, you get ready to hold hands. Yes. They say, no, they drop. I say, you can't drop the hand, yes. whatever, et cetera. Yes. 
That's what we are talking about yes. finally at some particular point. And I've just done a poem about uh, called these ants. You know, these ants who would come to the house, right? These ants who wore natural before we wore natural. They had these short cropped, you know, these ants who wore pantsuits before people wore pantsuits, whatever. Mm -hmm. And these ants who had these white shirts on and would come in and they had good government jobs downtown. You know what I mean? They were the only one making money, people. And they would come at Christmas time. Shout out to my aunt who had a good government job and took good care of me. Yes. And would come and and, and, at Christmas time give you $25. You know, yes. whatever, etc. And they would take you down. The first time I saw African art was in a house in the village, right, with an ant. Yes. You know, and there it was. And I'm looking like this. Said, oh my God, that exists, whatever. Yeah, yes, so does. I'm saying at some point, you know, we do stress, but we're not just saying, hey, just a certain kind of black no, woman, yes. no. but black women Thank who you. have supported us helped us. Um, my aunt loved me. Yes. She loved me and she made sure she said, you keep writing that poetry, yeah. you know, yeah. and yes. she would keep my poetry, you know, yeah. when I wrote yeah. it. So that's what I'm saying at yeah. some particular point. We got to understand that always in our families, you know, you know they, my, your grandmother would say, well, you know, you know, that's the best aunt, whatever, you know, she's different from us, but mm-hmm. she's family and mm-hmm. we love her. Hey, that's what we're talking about, yeah. you know. We love each other and that love is unconditional love. Um, when I was in China, in 73 before you were born, um, uh, they invited what, uh, the Chinese invited what they call, after Nixon made the track there, invited what they call culture workers. So Candace Bergen, Shirley MacLaine, uh, Alice Childress, the, the great uh, writer, yeah. um, the San Francisco Mime Troupe, and, and s- some leftists, you know, who had been uh, hounded by McCarthy, you know, mm-hmm. during those years. Yes. And I went there. and. I was getting ready to climb the Great Wall of China, so I decided to call home, and I, I, I had trouble making the operator understand that I'm calling collect, because I didn't know, I figured it would cost, cost me a thousand dollars to call from Beijing, you know, to New York, and I didn't have the money. So finally, my Aunt Sarah picked up the telephone, she said, are you home? I said, no, I'm still, I'm in a place called, at that time, Peking. I, I want to talk to the children, because I'm missing them, it's three weeks you know, since I'm gone. So they get on, they ask, Mommy, 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 did you get the wooden sword and, and the hat that the chairman wears and the jacket? And I lied, said, yes, I hadn't gotten it yeah. yet, you know? Mm-hmm. And I said, it's Monday morning. Mm-hmm. And they, I heard their little voices say, they, they were on two phones, separate phones. They said, Aunt Sarah, Mommy thinks it's Monday, but it's really <laughs> Sunday, isn't it? And so Aunt Sarah said, yes, it is Sunday. Maybe she's confused, right? Mm-hmm. Well. I said, I can't explain it to you now, but what I did as we took the bus to the Great Wall of China, I wrote uh, a haku from Beijing for Mungu and Marani, and it goes, let me wear the day well, so when it reaches you, you will enjoy it. But I knew that I was wearing the day well before my children got the day. And that night as I read my poetry at the University of Beijing, I ended with that poem, the haku. And one of the officials said, ah, oh, Professor Sanchez, if we here in the, in the East learn how to wear our days well, by the time you get that same day in the West, perhaps we will have peace. The joy about the haku is that it is seditious, that it always has a subtext. It's the obvious, and then it's that subtext underneath. Um, mm-hmm. And so therefore, that's what this is about, you know, this haku, talking about peace finally. Um, and I just want to leave that to the audience, you know, that we've got to learn how to wear our days well. If you really want to learn how to wear your days well, come with this organization yes. also, you know, yes. and find out how to wear your days well, how to think well also too, how to eat well also too, and how to live well and understand finally what it means to walk upright as black women, mm-hmm. you know, as women, period, mm-hmm. on this earth. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much, and thanks everyone for tuning in. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you guys. So we're going to do <laughs> that because we are now the ants. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. And I'm the, the, the grandmother. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, you know, before I was talking to yes. the grandmother, I was like, you know, Sister Gwen. And they make transition. All of a sudden, you get in that spot. And, yeah. then, and there you is. As I mean, yes. I is here. Yes. <laughs> right. Yes. yes. Thank, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. So much thank you. I thank yes. you so much for yeah. thinking about me. Yeah. So thank very you. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Thank you so very much. much. Yes. And is it possible to have a copy of that for my papers? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 We can get oh, it. Of course. Yeah. So yeah. I give it, I have it for my papers. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when people come in, they can see 
this part, you know, yeah. the, the written part, right? But also the audio and the, um, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes. 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 Thank you. She's the chairman of our board here. Her name oh, is Tulum Montgomery. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Yes. I'm so yes. proud Such of all gift. of you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you.